Hey guys, welcome back. It is Bible Scribe. Thank you for joining me again. I hope you all had a great holiday weekend, and I'm glad to be back doing some more videos. This is one I've been working on on and off for a while, but uh, I love this topic. I love the sources that I discovered in researching this topic. It is the topic of Jacob's Ladder. The vision that God gives Jacob in the book of Genesis in the Old Testament uh, it is a vision that is very rarely understood at all uh, because there's not much detail in the Bible about this vision of the latter. And so we're going to discover a lot of different things out about this latter, and it is due to some of the extra biblical writings that we're going to take a look at. We're also going to obviously start with the scriptures themselves. But my goal here today is to ask these questions like, what is the vision of Jacob's ladder? What's this ladder? What does it mean? We're going to find out all about this. Uh, does anybody even know? Because I know uh, until I did this study, I had never seen anyone explain this vision uh, to any satisfactory degree. So we're going to do that in this video. So we're going to find this stuff out. My outline for the video is as follows. We're going to take a look at the Genesis 28 account of Jacob's vision of the ladder. We are going to uh, use a specific source other than the Bible, source I'm calling source number one, to recount this vision. It's going to give us just a confirmation of what we read in Genesis. Then we're going to see another source that gives us the entire vision spelled out and uh, explained for us in plain English. We're going to then have kind of a brief history lesson because there's some connections to history that is in this vision and is important, um, and some connections between different writings, including the Bible. But then we're going to see a third source that gives us another confirmation of some of this information. So this is not just, uh, you know, we found this one place and now we're making a determination. No, this is actually information that's confirmed in a few sources. So we're going to have a really good picture of this vision and what it meant, what it was about by the end of this video. So we're going to start with the scriptures themselves in Genesis chapter 28. And we're just going to read together this uh, short, short account of this vision of Jacob. In verse 10 of chapter 28, it says, And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, God of Abraham, thy father, the God of Isaac, the land of one upon where you lie, to thee I will give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed, verse 14, shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, north, and south, and in thee and thy seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now just recognize that this sounds a lot like the uh, things that God said to Abraham. Very similar. In fact, some of them exactly the same. Because that, uh, that promise of God's was not just to Abraham, but to his descendants. It was to the Israel, Israelite people. Verse 15, Behold, I am with thee, I will keep thee in all places, whither thou goest, and bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee till I have done that which I have spoken to thee. And Jacob awakened out of his sleep and said, Sure the, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place! There is none. This is none other than the house of God, and it is the gate of heaven. All right. So we know here that, uh, that Jacob's not talking about the temple on earth. Just note that as well. The house of God here, he says, he says this place that he's seeing in the vision is the house of God and the gate of heaven. And that's at the top of the ladder. And so that is not the temple on earth. It hasn't been built yet. There is no temple on earth. 
Um, so just make that a mental note as we've just read that. So that's the end of the account, though, in Genesis. And so what are the points we can glean from what we've read in Genesis 28? And the, the reality is there's not much we've got to go on now. And the Bible just tells us there's a ladder, and it's reaching from heaven to earth. Jacob sees angels descending and ascending on this ladder. He says that the Lord stood above the ladder. And then after the, the vision itself, God promises the land that he's on to Jacob and his descendants. And then Jacob says, this must be the house of God, the gate of heaven. And we kind of identified he seems to be referring to the vision itself, not to the place he's standing on earth. Because there's no house of God on earth at that point. There's no temple, period. So now that we've read the account in Genesis 28, I'm going to take you to another source. This source is just going to confirm what we've just read in Genesis 28. And that source is the Testament of Jacob. Uh, you know, there's not a ton of information on this specific writing on the internet. I found copies of it. Uh, I will have links to descriptions uh, or to all those copies I found uh, in the description and in my blog post. Uh, but on Wikipedia, there's just this little blurb that says that this is now regarded as one of the Old Testament Apocrypha. And so uh, I didn't find many sources on that statement, but if that is true, then that means it is placed among the Apocrypha, including books that were included in the Catholic canon. And it was not included in the Catholic Bible like some of the Apocrypha have been, but this does place it in a high regard as far as scholars are concerned. Uh, and it is dated from the time of Christ or earlier. And generally when we hear that from scholars, like they give this huge range, it generally, uh, I, I generally accept those kinds of writings as pre-Christ because most of these Jewish writings of the time period were written prior to Christ and had connections in the Dead Sea Scrolls and all sorts of other writings. Um, but anyway, you know, scholars give us that range, including the time of Christ in the first century. So what does the Testament of Jacob say? And this is the part of the Testament of Jacob that speaks about this vision. And it's only in verse 3. It says, Blessed are you too, Jacob, for you saw God face to face and beheld the host of angels of the Most High God. You saw the ladder set up on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. You also saw the Lord set on top of it in power too great for words. And you cried out, saying, This is the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Exactly what we read in Genesis 28. Blessed are you, for you have found strength in God and are strong among men. And it, of course, continues. That's not all of the Testament of Jacob. I uh, encourage you to read that on your own as you have time. But this is the part that talks about this ladder of Jacob. And in this account, we've kind of reaffirmed what we saw in Genesis chapter 28. And that is, you know, again, there's this ladder reaching from heaven to earth, angels on it, the Lord standing above it or is at the top of it. And then there's a promise to Jacob and his descendants and that Jacob had called this the house of God, the gate of heaven. So I just wanted to show you that, that we have another extra biblical writing that recounts and reinforces what the scripture said. But now we're going to take... Uh, and find another extra biblical account that gives us a whole detailed explanation of what this vision of the ladder of Jacob is. And that source is called, actually the writing is called the ladder of Jacob. And it is a Jewish work from around the first century, again, about the same time period, time date range, the scholars give this, that they give the Testament of Jacob that we just read. Uh, but it's probably earlier this, and you'll see why I say that in a minute, because it has some prophecy in it that we know has, has, was fulfilled. And some secular, uh, excuse me, secular scholars, when they run across prophecies that they see fulfilled in this time period, in the few hundred years B.C. to the time of Christ, and when they see a prophecy that's fulfilled in the time of Christ, a lot of secular scholars have trouble with that, and they'll say, oh, well, that means that the Christians wrote that after the fact. Well, that's just because they doubt that prophecy could be fulfilled, and they doubt the supernatural aspect of prophecy. But uh, 
if you follow the Bible, you follow Christ himself, you know that he fulfilled all types of prophecy. Uh, so many different prophecies that were from thousands of years beforehand that we have a general acceptance of the fact that Christ fulfilled prophecy. And this source, the ladder of Jacob, will be no different. There is some Christ prophecies in it. But I wanted to show you where I got and found and stumbled upon, upon this writing. It's in this book, and I have a hard copy of this book uh, and the first volume, and it's called The Old Testament Pseudepigrapha by James H. Charlesworth. And if you are a student of the scriptures, I encourage you, uh, th this book and the first volume, and I'll have a picture of both at the end of the, the video, but these books are incredible. And you see so many different writings that, uh, you know, you never knew existed, but they were early Christian, early Jewish writings at the time of Christ and way earlier. And I'll tell you what they really do is they really just confirm the scriptures. And they give you a strength in your study and research that you will never have had before. Uh, so I encourage you to look up those sources. You will get a lot out of them, I, I uh, guarantee it. But now we're talking about this, this writing called The Ladder of Jacob. And now let's see what it says about this vision that Jacob had. And there is going to be some reading here. We're going to look at these uh, portions of this because they explain this vision completely. It says, And lo, a ladder was set up on earth, whose top reached to heaven. And the top of the ladder was a face as of a man hewn out of fire. Now, I'll just say, based on other prophecies, when I hear of a man that's fire or a face that's on fire, that generally is almost always referring to God himself. Uh, and we know from the, the, uh, what we read in Genesis and in the Testament of Jacob that Jacob felt he saw the face of God at the top of this ladder. So that stands to reason. Now, it had 12 steps to the top of the ladder. Now, this is important, so key on these facts here. It had 12 steps to the top of the ladder, and upon each step up to the top were two human faces on the right and on the left. 24 faces seen to their breast on the ladder, meaning these were like statue figures, like busts. From the chest up, you saw these almost like statues, if you will, but they were had human faces from the chest up, two on each step, 12 steps in all, so 24 faces or busts of these figures. It says, but the middle face was higher than them all, which I saw made of fire to the shoulder and the arm, very terribly, more than the 24 faces. So this face at the top that he recognizes God himself was higher than them all and on fire. And as I looked, behold, the angels of God ascending and descending thereon, but the Lord was set above it. And he called me, saying, Jacob, Jacob. And I said, Here am I, Lord. And he said to me, The land whereon thou sleepest I will give to thee. And to thy seed after thee, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and the sand of the sea. So in this first section, we already see a little more of the picture. We see these 12 steps, the, the uh, two busts on each step with a figure and a face. And so 24 busts all together up the steps and God's face at the top of these steps as if it was on fire. And then he makes this promise to Jacob that we've seen in our other sources, including the scriptures, that he would give him and his seed that land. So let's go to the next section here. But this he said to me, the ladder which you saw, which had 12 steps having two human faces, which changed their appearance. Now this ladder is the age. And the 12 steps are the times of this age. And the 24 faces the kings of the lawless heathen of this age. Under these kings will be tried thy children's children and the line of thy sons. They will rise up against the lawlessness of thy descendants and will lay this place waste through four descents and because of the sins of thy descendants. And of the substance of thy forefathers will be built this palace in the temple of the name of thy God and thy fathers. The palace 
Uh, but through the wrath of thy descendants will it be desolate until the fourth descent of this age, for thou didst see four visions or faces. So what we've got right, right now, we've got the 12 steps, and it says in that passage that this is the 12 divisions of the, the age they are in, which is the Jewish age. Um, and the Jews throughout history have called it that. Uh, it is the age during which the Jewish nation was intact before Christ came. And, uh, you know, the Jews that don't believe that Christ was Messiah, they see themselves as still in that age. Uh, but that was truly from Abraham to Christ. And it says in that passage that there were 12 spans of time during that period. Now, there were 24 faces and busts uh, on these steps, two on each of the 12 steps. And it says these are the heathen kings, or, and I will call these the angel principalities of the nations. Now, I have another video on these angel principalities. Uh, and it, it has just that title, Principalities of the Nations. Uh, and these angels were rulers that shepherded these nations, all the nations of the earth, from the time of the Tower of Babel forward. It says that at that time, in both the Bible and in other writings, and I'll show that in my other video if you go see it, that they were set up over the nations to shepherd them each of the different pagan and heathen nations, it called them. And so we can understand then when it says these are the heathen kings, that these are the angel principalities set up over all those nations. And that through this different time period, the age of the, the Jews, the Jewish age, um, there's 12 divisions of time and there's 24 of these principalities that are set up as shepherds over the nations. And I'll just tell you right now, um, I don't go into detail anymore in this video on it, but that is echoed in the book of Enoch. There's a prophecy called the prophecy of the bulls and the lambs. And in that prophecy, it talks about the shepherds that were set up over the nations. And so it echoes this very clearly uh, that these are the principalities. So points so far in this ladder of Jacob that we've already read now. Um, including or talking about these 24 kings where else do we see 24 kings and that's in revelation chapters 4 5 11 and 19 and those are the references there but in chapter 4 it says this about them round about the throne there were four and 20 seats 24 seats and upon the seats i saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white raiment and they had on their heads crowns of gold the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Now they're all bowing down before God. And just as on the ladder of Jacob, these twenty-four busts are below God's face, which is at the top and is on fire. And so it gives us a, a kind of a good parallel here between these 24 elders. And that, that word elders just means kind of like leader, bishop. Uh, and so we can take that as a similar word to nation, um, king, or ruler. And so it, it's very parallel. And this is the 24 kings here uh, as the 24 elders with thrones in Revelation. And they obviously had thrones. They were kings. So I think it's a good parallel uh, to what's being said there in the latter of Jacob about these 24 heathen kings. And they were set up by God. So also in this uh, Jewish age, I just wanted to recount some of the historical points of the Jewish age that's in these 12 time spans that it's talking about, that God is showing to Jacob in this vision. You know, and, in, and these are dates that are approximate because it's as best we can tell. So they're not perfect, but they're close, most likely. Then in 1928 BC, uh, Jacob flees to Laban and he has this vision of the latter. This is about the time period we're talking about, about 2,000 years before Christ. And then in 1446, a few hundred years later, it's the Exodus. Is when the, it's when the Israelites came out of bondage in Egypt. And then in 722, 
the Assyrians defeated Israel, and this is the first dispersion of the Jews and the Assyrian captivity. Then in 587 BC, a few hundred years later, Nebuchadnezzar defeats Judah, and that's the Babylonian captivity where the Jews go off to Babylon, and there's the book of Daniel. And then in 515 BC, the temple is, has been fully reconstructed by that time, and that's what ends up being called Herod's Temple once Rome comes along, and Herod is in rulership there. And then uh, in 430 BC is when Ezra is alive, or thereabouts, you know, again, these are approximate times, uh, years. But that's the time Ezra is writing. Now, this is important to us because Ezra's books, one of Ezra's books, is our third source that talks about something related to this ladder of Jacob. So we're going to go there next. And source number three for our study here is the second book of Esdras, or Ezra. That word Esdras and Ezra are synonymous. It means Ezra. And it's, you know, it also is called Esdras II. But it's part of the Apocrypha. Again, this was part of the Catholic canon. It was in all the Catholic Bibles. And include it was also in the first versions of the King James Bible. So for, you know, centuries, this has been a very well attested, very well respected and, um, you know, useful um, a part of the Apocrypha. And so we can at least be confident this has been used for, by Christians throughout the centuries. And something that's interesting that is mentioned in the second book of Esdras is these 12 time spans that we just had mentioned in the Ladder of Jacob. And so now we have another connection that reinforces this idea of 12 time spans of the Jewish age and that these rungs of the ladder or possibly steps on the ladder um, because the word ladder could be translated to steps as well. It's not known for sure if it meant like a, not like a wooden ladder like we have, but it was probably steps that he saw leading into heaven. But Ezra 2 says this, and he's talking to Ezra after a vision that Ezra had, and he's talking about the time frame in which he is and what's occurring. He says, For thou shalt be taken away from all, and henceforth shall remain with my son, God's talking about Jesus Christ there. He's saying Ezra will be taken after death to be with his son, Jesus Christ. And with such as be like thee, until the times be ended. For the world hath lost, hath lost its youth, and the times begin to wax old. For the world is divided into twelve parts, and the ten parts of it are gone already, and half of the tenth part. And there remains that which is after the half of the tenth part. Now therefore set thine house in order and reprove thy people. And it goes on and on and says, For yet greater evils, in verse 16 at the bottom there, greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. So in this writing, Ezra 2, he's telling Ezra, right now, Ezra, where you currently are, and we identify that as about 430 B.C., he says that ten parts and half of the tenth part, so probably he's talking about ten and a half parts had elapsed, and there was only, after ten and a half to twelve, there's only one and a half parts, or two and a half parts possibly, depending on how you count that, left to get to the end of the twelfth part. So I guess that would be two and a half parts left. So you have the end of the, the tenth, and then the eleventh and the twelfth. So that's two and a half parts. So that, that was God telling Ezra what point in those 12 divisions of time for the Jewish age he was in. And so, you know, there's a lot of math you can do to try to nail down all the time frames and, you know, the different 12 segments. Uh, I got in a little bit to that, but it, it got hairy. And, you know, because also I must, we all must admit that our, our dates are fuzzy on some of these things. Like I went through some of those dates they're not perfect, and so our time frames aren't going to be perfect, but all these different writings reinforce this idea, and they are synonymous in one voice that there were 12 parts to the Jewish age, and that they were known, and that was a Jewish idea, and it was carried down through the centuries. And so that just brings us back to that ladder of Jacob saying, 
Well, this was the thought, and this was what that ladder represented, was those 12, age, 12 spans, time spans of the Jewish age. So back to that ladder of Jacob, and this is just for fun now, because we've kind of seen what the ladder of Jacob vision was about, that it was about the time spans of the Jewish age, how it was going to be broken up, and those, those rulers, those 24 rulers of the age that would go down through history. And so that is what the vision was about. Now this part is just plain fun because that writing, the ladder of Jacob, also includes a prophecy about Jesus Christ in the section we were reading, but just after. And so I just wanted to read that to you in this last section. He says, But whereas thou sawest angels descending and ascending upon the ladder, in the last times there will be a man from the Most High, and he will desire to join the upper with the lower, meaning join heaven to earth. And that's what Jesus Christ came to do. Of him before his coming shall your sons and your daughters prophesy, your young men shall see visions of him, and what does that sound like? That sounds like exactly like Joel's prophecy in Joel chapter 2 that was fulfilled in the book of Acts. And in Acts chapter 2, it says this was the Joel 2 prophecy. Well, this is also recounted here in this ladder of Jacob, this writing of the first century or prior. For there shall be such signs as these at the time of his coming. A tree felled by an axe shall drop blood. And here in this, uh, in the book where I got this, it even referenced the epistle of Barnabas, which is an early Christian writing that recounts a tree being felled by the axe and dropping blood. Boys of three months old shall speak rationally. And this is something that's recounted in the Sibylline oracles, in the Testament of the Lord, and in Ezra book four. A child in its mother's womb shall proclaim his way. And of course, that was Christ in the womb of Mary in Luke chapter one. A young man or rather, that was, wasn't that Elizabeth's child? Yeah, that was John. Anyway, <laughs> in Luke chapter 1, a young man shall be as an old man. So all these signs were going to precede this coming of the Lord. And then cometh the expected one, this man who was going to come down from heaven, whose path will be perceived by no man. Then will the earth rejoice because it hath received the glory of heaven. That which was above shall be below and of thy seed shall grow up a royal root, and he shall increase and destroy the power of the evil one. That would be Satan, obviously. Destroys his power. Now, realize it doesn't say he's going to destroy Satan. Destroys the power of the evil one. And in the book of Revelation and all the prophecies, he says, I'm going to destroy the authority of the evil one. I'm going to put all authority and rule under my feet. That's what he does. He doesn't destroy Satan at the time he comes. So don't get it mixed up. But he himself shall be a savior of the heathen and the rest of them that are weary and a cloud which shades the whole world from the heat. And that's in Isaiah 32. For otherwise that which is disordered could not be put in order if he came not. Otherwise that which is below could not be joined to that which is above. And I would say don't get caught up too heavily on this above and below saying because you probably have heard this phrase before as above so below and and that uh, phrase is used by masonic teaching and esoteric teaching but that's not what is being talked about here it is uh, this is not a gnostic writing nor are any of the true apocrypha and pseudepigrapha uh, especially that I go into in any of my videos, you will never see me pull out a Gnostic text unless I tell you it's Gnostic, and that would be the reason we are bringing it out uh, to uh, you know probably debate against it. Um, but this is not a Gnostic text. This idea of Christ joining heaven to earth was uh, not uncommon in Jewish writing, that the Messiah would do just that. It says, continuing, it says, Now at his coming, meaning the coming of Christ, will images of brass and stone and graven things utter their voice for three days long. And this means that the pagan images in the temples would, would talk, would utter voices, pronouncing the things that were coming upon them because of Christ. And this is actually recounted in some other writings. Um, I don't... I don't have those writings documented right now, um, but I have read through a couple of them. Uh, maybe at some point I will bring that information all full circle 
in a different video. And they announced to the wise men and let them know what is befalling on earth, these pagan idols talking. And by the star they will know the way to him when they see him upon the earth who the angels see not above. And the star it's talking about, if you remember, if you've heard my other videos on the time of Christ in the first century, number one, there was the star that heralded Jesus Christ's birth. But then in around 65, 66, 67 AD, there was a star in the heavens that looked like a sword and stayed there for a full year. This is recounted by Josephus and Tacitus, and I believe Cassius Dio also. Um, so we know that occurred, and so that also was seen as a sign of, of, of the Savior. Then will the Almighty be found in a body on the earth, and encompassed by the arms of a mortal. And he renews the state of man and quickens Adam and Eve that died through the fruit of the tree. Adam and Eve, waiting in Hades for redemption from Christ, were now going to get it. This was the prophecy of the Messiah that would raise, resurrect the righteous out of Hades. Then will the deceit of the godless one, Satan, be overcome. He will be overcome, not destroyed. But his deceit would be overcome. And all idols will fall on their faces. They will be put to shame. Again, this has been attested to in other writings that it happened at that time. By one who is adorned with honor because they made lying inventions. Henceforth, they will not have power to rule or give prophecies, for their honor is taken from them. They will remain without glory. And then continuing, For the child that is to come taketh the power and might from them, and recompenses to Abraham the truth which he promised him. For this child rounds off all that is sharp, every rough thing he makes smooth, and casts all unrighteousness to the depths of the sea, and does wonders in the heaven and the earth. And Christ, of course, did that. And he will be wounded in the midst of the house of the beloved. But when he is wounded, then also the saving and end of all corruption draws near. He's wounded and the saving. He's wounded in the house of the beloved. He's going to be wounded in the temple. And that exactly is exactly what happened. In the courtyard of the temple, he received his stripes. For they that have wounded them shall themselves receive a wound which shall not be healed for them forever. But the wounded one shall all creatures worship, and upon him shall many hope, and everywhere and among the Gentiles shall he be known. But they that have known his name shall not be put to shame, and his own might and his years shall not fail forever. And that was the prophecy of Jesus Christ in that writing, the Ladder of Jacob. This is why I do think this writing was before Christ. Uh, it is a very Jewish, but very perfect prophecy of Jesus Christ himself. And it's not doesn't sound at all like a Christian writing this because it is very Jewish in the way it talks about it. Um, and so that is our thing on that is that's it on Ladder of Jacob. But you've seen how that writing we saw, the Ladder of Jacob, actually explains that whole vision that Jacob received from God and uh, spells it out very clearly helps us understand that the Jewish age between Abraham and Christ had 12 divisions of time, and that that was echoed in the Testament of Jacob, and in the Scriptures itself we saw the vision, and then echoed in the second book of Esdras. And so we have these all these different writings kind of all focusing in on the same thing and, and reinforcing one another. So I hope that's informative. I hope it's exciting because it was exciting to me to know that for the first time I really understood what that vision had to do with. And it wasn't, uh, it wasn't, you know, I mean, I've heard all sorts of interpretations of that vision. They weren't what this writing says. And I get the strong feeling that this writing is correct, especially with the corroboration we saw between the other, uh, other uh, sources that we looked at. So... I hope that's exciting for you. These are the books that I mentioned earlier. The Old Testament Pseudepigrapha by James H. Charlesworth, Volumes 1 and 2. I have bought both of these. I did get them used, but they were in great shape, so you can probably find them that way. Or I think there's digital versions available too, although I have heard that uh, the second volume has some missing pages in the digital version. Um, just a warning there. You can find that out for yourself. 
like and subscribe get the alerts if you um, enjoy the videos you get a lot out of them I put a lot of time and research into it for you and I hope that you do get what you are seeking out of these videos and that it, it builds you up and it encourages you to study harder and harder and look at these different things as we do it together so thank you and God bless you take care hey guys I wanted to do a quick addendum to my video on Jacob's Ladder and that's because I have another source uh, that I kind of ran across just as I was finishing up my, my my full video there but I wanted to add this portion in so that you had this information as well there's another source yet that also talks about these 12 time spans of the Jewish age and so it parallels the vision that Jacob had in the Bible and in the ladder of Jacob and in the testament of Jacob and we also saw in the second book of Esdras but also let me pull it up here for you in the book of Enoch chapter 89 and then this is in the middle of the prophecy I've mentioned in other videos about the bulls and the sheep uh, and in chapter 89 verse 72 it says this and forthwith I saw how the shepherds pastured for 12 hours now these shepherds are the same shepherds the uh, the principality angels of the nations that were going to shepherd over God's people as he distributed them during the dispersion. And that's exactly what it's talking about here in this prophecy from God to Enoch. Uh, he also says, Behold, three of those sheep turned back and came and entered and began to build up all that had fallen down of that house. But the wild boars tried to hinder them, but they were not able. This is a part of this narrative, and th this is one of my most favorite prophecies in the book of Enoch. But I had forgotten that it also mentioned this time period these 12 time periods of the Jewish age and as it says there he saw how the shepherds pastured for 12 hours that's those 12 time spans that are mentioned in the ladder of Jacob the other writing that we read from the time of Christ or just before uh, and so I thought this was very pertinent and just wanted you to have the extra source for your own research and study so God bless take care